My name is Denny Brandt, and welcome to Speak Dicely, the podcast where I get together with other tabletop enthusiasts, and we speak dicely together. Okay, obviously, I'm not the luminous and effervescent Denny Brandt. I am Nikki Degui, and I would be what the kids call D&D adjacent. My partner, Matt, who has been on this podcast before, so you've heard his beautiful voice uh, in your ears before. He is the one who's into all things D&D and tabletop games. Myself, along with my very special guest today, we don't play, but we have heard all of the stories and all of the yelling and all of the everything. So joining me to talk about an outside perspective of D&D and tabletop role-playing games are Chelsea Driver and Natalie Forn. Welcome. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. How are things? How are things today with the... With everything. Pretty good. Yeah. It's like very nice, relaxed Sunday. It's raining here and um, yeah, pretty chill. <laughs> yeah, things are pretty good. I moved out of my apartment into a house. I'm exhausted, but it's a sunny day and yet it's it's good. It's, I had ice cream cake for lunch. I'm an adult. That sounds excellent. That's the height of being an adult, honestly. <laughs> it's like, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I can do anything I want when I'm an adult. And then when you're an adult and you eat cake for lunch, which sounds amazing. But then later you're like, wait, my stomach hurts for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Yes. Yeah, I feel like being a kid, you're like, I'm going to eat ice cream cake every day. And then when you're adult, an adult, you're like, I'm lactose intolerant. Is it worth it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw like uh, something on Tumblr or something once where it was like, Oh, I was at McDonald's and this uh, kid was behind me and I was like, yeah, that's right. I can go to McDonald's whenever I want, but don't ask me anything about my life because that's just, it'll just get sad. (laughs) I'm excited to chat today with both of you. So to the listeners, hopefully this uh, will be a fun episode because as I said, the three of us don't play D&D. So if you're here to learn. Yeah, don't come looking for expertise here <laughs> you won't find any <laughs> but keep keep listening and, and supporting the show please that would be great let's get right into the questions uh that i have here on my fun list of questions so let's uh start with just like tell us about yourselves and what you're passionate about so if uh maybe chelsea you want to go first yeah yeah uh, i'm chelsea i am 25 I'm like from Vancouver Island, living just outside Vancouver right now. My partner Nick plays, or my fiance plays um, D&D probably for like the last five years. We've been together for uh, nine years and um, God, probably even longer than that. He's probably played for like six or so years. And I am, much to his dismay, not passionate about D&D or any tabletop games, except for maybe Monopoly. Um, <laughs> but uh, I am passionate about architecture, interior design. Um, or we love rock climbing, getting outside, and I'm very passionate that people should adopt dogs and not buy them, <laughs> which is a random thing to be passionate about, but that's where I am. And um, yeah, just getting getting outside, being in nature, trying to think of what else, art in general, and uh, yeah, those are always some of the high level things I feel strongly about. <laughs> I feel you with the dogs, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's a random thing, but <laughs> everyone's got to have a stick in the mud. <laughs> feels like uh, writing a Tinder dating profile. My name's Natalie Vorn. I'm 28 <laughs> years old. I like long walks on the beach and drinking wine at inappropriate hours. That last one was true. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dating Adam for... I, I hate the word dating. We've been together for six years now. More than six years. Something like that. I've lost count, honestly. It's a never-ending joy. I'm passionate about, uh, I really like my job. I make costumes for film and TV and theater, and I actually do enjoy it, even though sometimes I have to remind myself that I enjoy it. Uh, It's really long hours, so I get very, very tired. But it's good. It's great. What a stupid job. I help people play pretend for a living. Which makes you think that I would be into D&D, suspending your disbelief. And like, I love reading. I love fantasy novels. I'm super into that. I'm really nerdy. Like, but I just, I don't know. For some reason, it, it, I never got into it. Adam wanted me to, but he loved me by that point. So I knew he wasn't going to leave me if I didn't uh-huh. get into it. So I was like, no, 
it's okay. I really did rope him in. I played um, DC deck building, I think, every single time we hung out in the beginning when I was still trying to, like, reel in that fish. And I don't think I've played it since <laughs> the first yeah. few months of us dating. Like, okay, cool, that's done. I put that work in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think, I just, I think it's a patience thing. I, I don't think I have the patience for it. But yeah, I really love my work. I actually do love the beach. I'm obsessed with dogs as well. Adopt on shop, here for that. Adam and I foster cats when we can. Yeah, and I love to read and I've been trying to write, but it's terrible, but that's okay. It's still fun. And I know nothing about D&D except for what I've overheard from Adam and listening to him watch people on YouTube. I'm trying to think of what's his favorite one. Um, oh, the D&D channel. They're all friends. It's, is it have, Dicely? Like, pardon me? Yeah. <laughs> it's Dicely. <laughs> and it is funny because I will listen to like the podcast and then I hear all of my friends' voices and I'm like, Mary, they're all hanging out without me. And it's dicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all I know is tertiary knowledge. I can also tell the audience about myself even though I'm hosting this because I like talking about myself but uh <laughs> I'm Nikki I am a graphic designer and a food photographer and I am passionate about all things food I host a baking show on YouTube which so is cool. very amateur yeah um I'll talk about it more later when we plug our stuff but uh it's very fun I like being funny I like you know, watching funny things. I love sitcoms. But yeah, I also love cooking and I love eating food and taking pictures of food and being cool. I also am into the adopt out shop for the dogs. I used to volunteer for a dog rescue in Toronto. That's awesome. Yeah. And what else? There was something. Else. Oh, I guess I can talk about Matt, my guy. He uh, has been, the, like I said, he's been on the podcast a few times and he tells me all these stories about all these campaigns and all this stuff. I have played D&D like a little bit, like I've played like a one-off character and I've DM'd a one-shot for Matt's birthday, but I, I had Denny help me with a lot of stuff about that because I just had no idea what I was doing and I still don't. So yeah, I, uh, I think it's also a patience thing for me because I can't imagine playing one game for like five hours. <laughs> I just... It's not, it's not for me, but like, I'll watch The Office for like six hours straight. So I don't know. What else do I do? I like to bake. I like to paint. I also like long walks on the beach because the beach is great. And I live near the beach. Uh, so it's awesome. And nerdy kind of stuff. I'm really passionate about like Harry Potter and yeah, yeah. Marvel. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I can, if you watch a Harry Potter, like, movie with me, I'll just, like, spew out facts and I'll be like, did you know this? Did you know this? And, like, Matt will watch it with me and he'll be like, oh, I just want to watch this movie. <laughs> like, okay, it's fine. But, yeah, that's basically my whole life story. So, here we go. Okay, next question. Putting you guys in the hot seat. How has your partner's D&D &D habits affected your life? I never thought this many people would see me in a bathrobe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But I have discovered that there's like, you could, like, I feel like when people first started coming over to the house, you'd like, oh, like, I think when he first started playing, they would host, we would host, I'd open my bedroom door and I'd be like, there's like 30 people in my living room, just total hyperbole, but it felt that way. It's a small apartment, close the door and be like, I'm going to put on jeans and a shirt and I've got people over. Okay. Well. After a while, the illusion phase that they are not there to see you. They don't really realize that you exist. And now, like, I mean, there's probably most of the people in theater school have seen me in my bathrobe at one point or another. That's I just never thought that that many people would. But that would be my life. But yeah, it's super fun coming out of the shower, too. And then yes. there's just a table full of people, like oh, yeah. 10 people. And you're just like, oh, hey, everyone. Hello. How are you? <laughs> How's it going? Don't mind me. Like, literally in a towel. I have come out <laughs> and just been like, well, glad I didn't walk out naked. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's usually like thank god for jason because i feel like his character voices are 
he really commits to them. And I feel like even in the shower, I can hear it. So I'm like, okay, cool. Somebody is here. <laughs> Somebody is here right now. I will put on clothes. Adam has come home before, like, and I'm sorry, TMI, but if there's nobody, oh, <laughs> clothing off, not <laughs> here for it. Yeah, not that's at all. the best part about having your own house. Absolutely. You just, like, the clothes are not necessary. You wear fucking clothes through that. So he's like, come home before and open the door. And I'm like, hey, baby. And he's like, oh, um, so Logan's right behind me. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> 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 and I don't really care. I just don't want to like, I don't know, send Logan with a tit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I um I think I'm lucky in like like our apartment is really small, so Matt doesn't typically host like with actual people here. He'll usually like go somewhere else, so that's pretty good. But uh yeah, I've definitely um been like cuz he'll the virtual stuff now, how everything is virtual, like he'll just be in the bedroom on the computer for like six hours and i'm like it's 11 30 at night i would like to go to sleep please <laughs> can you and having a camera like I, we just moved into this two-bedroom apartment which is so nice but before totally like he's just in the common area with his webcam on and so i feel like a lot of times i'll be like in a towel or something or trying to walk like live in my house and you're like peeking mm-hmm. over it's like is the camera like terrible so yeah yeah but mm-hmm. say lovey <laughs> i told adam if he ever if Adam ever starts like an actual stream or something, like I'll make sure to get him followers. Every time I walk through the background, <laughs> I'll just lose like a sweater. Yeah. Then, like, <laughs> like it'll just slowly. He's like, you get kicked <laughs> off for doing that, Natalie. I'm like, listen, I'm trying to support you. Okay. Yeah. This is the <laughs> only way I know how. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I also think that just like listening, I don't know about you guys, but like hearing all the stories about the campaigns, it's just like, Matt will go on for hours talking about what happened in the last session and like my character this and this character. It's fun to listen to. It's like a it's like a like a story. And then there's so, so many things that I just don't understand. <laughs> it's like you did what? What did like what did you do? Yeah, cuz they do a lot of like like they make their own stories and they make their own characters and so they're usually like ridiculous, which is fun to listen to and like really weird. So yeah, I, I feel like I know a lot about D&D, but I also don't know anything about D&D at the same time, you know? Yeah, I feel like I could hold a conversation really well with someone who was, like, thinking about getting into it. Or if someone was, like, talking about a game, I could kind of be like, oh, you sound like you're having a good time in that game. Or, like, maybe you're losing. But, yeah, I don't know any... I, I couldn't hold my own with people that actually knew what they were doing. But I can talk about it a little bit with people that don't know about the game. Do you guys ever try to, like make like slide jokes into your everyday vernacular to like make your partner love you more like (laughs) he for his birthday i got him a cake and it was like you know negative 10 dexterity (laughs) because he's getting old (laughs) (laughs) i try to slide the references in to be like look i pay attention when you talk yeah 100 percent. i mean I, like, ran a whole one-shot for him for his birthday as a surprise. Yeah, you love yours more than we love ours. <laughs> yeah, I don't even try. It's pretty bad. It was a lot. He used to come home and do, like, he would, like, talk about what happened during the campaign. And I think after a while, he was, like, she, like eyes are glazed over. She's not paying attention. Just, <laughs> yeah. I, I been really bad. But it's helped me with other people because, especially in theater, like, we used to have this class called Crew. So you'd be, like, in the carpentry shop or whatnot. And I feel like you could, I don't know, get a sense or someone would be speaking in a certain way and some terms really, I don't know, I found them to carry over a little bit. So I could be like, you're kind of like a chaotic, neutral person. And then that person would be like, oh my God, how did you know I played D&D or something? So that like, that's fun, I guess. But again, it's like trying to, I don't know, carry on, carry off like I know what I'm doing with people that don't really know too much about D&D. I don't know. (laughs) Natalie, when you were talking about uh, when you're introducing yourself and saying that you played a lot of DC deck building, like so much, that's like one step above me. I don't. <laughs> they played that so much. I'm just like this game. 
seems so hard but like I did the same thing like when Matt and I first started dating is that I played Pokemon Go because that was like really popular when we first like started I was like yeah I'm gonna play Pokemon Go like I'm like so good at this game and I played it once and I was like this is not for me (laughs) but I tried (laughs) do you guys remember that summer when Pokemon Go first came out it was like hordes of pale people suddenly left their base (laughs) I mean, like, I was sitting with an assistant with, like, a, a a professor, and he, like, had his phone out, and he was like, oh, time to go. I'm like, where are we going? It was me and, like, a handful of other students that were just hanging out in his office, and he's like, oh, there's a, I don't know, a hotspot, a gathering. Obviously, I've never played Pokemon Go. And he, I'm like, you're 40 with two children. What are you doing? Like, but, <laughs> I mean, good no for shame. him. He's having fun. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then there was like yeah, several other people at this spot too, which is like, it's just, it's fun to see other people enjoy stuff, but I'm also like, I don't understand. I know it was crazy like that. So that was the summer that Matt and I first started dating. And so like, yeah, we went to like downtown Toronto and like just walked around and caught Pokemon. You like, did a lot of cardio for your relationship. That's applaudable. Well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I run the extra mile if I have to catch a Charmander, <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I don't I don't know, like, what other habits. Maybe the fact that he that he's in three different campaigns and, like, those happen different nights of the week and then you just never see each other anymore because <laughs> of all the, all the D&D. It's a lot of time away. Adam likes to bring up, like, what you were saying, Chels, just as we're falling asleep. He's like oh, I don't really know what to do for my next campaign. Like, they're at this one point with this dark wizard, and, like, I really want them to go here, but, of course, they want them to go there, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm like, why do you always bring this up? At, like, we're laying in bed. The lights are off. I can't help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. Go to sleep. The court of appeals is closed. Like, I, I can't help you with this problem. Please make an appointment. Yes. During my office hours. <laughs> Eight to nine every other Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one thing that is positive, <laughs> we're like just like shitting all over this. But like one thing that's that's actually positive is that Matt is running a campaign that's like not D and D, but it's like a Pokemon tabletop kind of game. He just loves Pokemon. He's a Pokemon guy, but uh, because he's so in love with me, obviously, he made me a gym leader, which is pretty cool. <laughs> he's like, "What do you want your your Pokemon to be?" I'll be like this, this, and this. Cool. Like, let's just do the way that I want to do it. And um, I think that his players didn't get right away that it was me, even though it was my name. So I'm not sure how they didn't get that. But uh, yeah. And then it's like you base it off of me. And like, um, I love like shopping local. And so what he did was they had to, the players had to get like points if they like shopped local in the town or something like that, or like they help local people. So that was really nice. That's like a nice little positive. That's very sweet. It's really, I kind of like that he's got, like we're both very independent people. So it's lovely because I feel like after dinner, like I'm a workaholic and I like will happily sit and just work on the computer or, you know, whatever I'm doing at the time, whatever I'm really into for hours and hours and so it's lovely for him to have something too that he's like I'm gonna go play D&D for the next like three hours and I'm like oh thank god because I was about to feel really guilty being like I'm gonna go over here on my computer and work on whatever I'm doing and especially since the pandemic I think working from home has like opened up that gateway a lot where yeah suddenly working a lot yeah completely agree having separate interests is honestly like he keeps wanting me to play D&D and I'm like babe no it's okay like and and I, he's not pushy about it or anything. He's I think he's accepted it. He just you know when a campaign starts, he always invites me out of courtesy, which is very nice. He's very polite. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually like it sounds so weird, but it's really nice that. And we were talking about this yesterday too. We're not like clingy or overbearing, and it's really easy to say to each other as well. Like, hey, I just need like to not talk to you for like twenty four hours. Okay, great. Um, he's my best friend. I love him so much, but you have to have and separate interests. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree as well. Yeah. Matt has a running campaign every Sunday night. And so like, it's just nice to have like the Sunday night to myself where I just like do whatever I like watch a show that he would never want to watch or like do yoga or like something like that. Like it's, it's awesome. On like maybe a TMI note, I thought a man who was into role play would maybe be, you know, more into role play but so true i never thought about that yeah yeah you would think you would think no dice over here 
Adam's really good at voices too. And like sometimes, again, TMI, but whatever, who gives a shit? If Denny doesn't like it, he can edit it out. Or yeah. sorry, if he doesn't like it, she can edit it out. <laughs> Denny who? This is my podcast now. <laughs> is, there a, is there a rating? Edit that bit. <laughs> <out. Read> that <laughs> bit. Um, Adam can do like Henry Cavill's Witcher voice really well. <laughs> And like I gotta say, guys, <laughs> he can also do Jon Snow's voice really well, mm. and Cal Drogo. So like it's just hitting all the. Mar- I'm really glad I found a, a little voice actor there to fall in love with. It's like having all of them available at any time. That does sound fun. Yeah, Matt doesn't really do any voices at all. <laughs> no, he's just does his own does his own voice. But I think like one time I remember we were at somebody's house and like it was with Michael and he was like saying something about role-playing or something like that. And I made a joke with Matt. I was like, yeah, we can role-play whenever you want or something like that. And then Michael was like, ah! And he just like <laughs> ran away. He's like, ew! <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah, I feel bad for the guys when they come over to my house to play D&D because like everyone, I, I hear the whole thing happening. So like every once in a while when something happens where a dirty joke could be attached, I stick my head out the door as quick as I can and I make the joke and then I just close the bedroom door again. <laughs> yeah nick really commits to his voices like he'll do like different ones but and i hear them quite a bit but i've never been in the other room and like listened in and been like oh that's pretty attractive like it's usually he's like a scottish dwarf like there is it's not really like <laughs> so no no luck on my end with it <laughs> so far no attractive voices have come out no adam is on purpose he knows i love certain characters and then so like you know he'll he'll do it like i'm sitting here at the table reading and he'll say something in a voice and i'm just like mother now i have to get up and have sex with you God damn. <laughs> <laughs> the inconvenience of it all especially working 80 hour weeks <laughs> i don't have time i don't have time and yet <laughs> let's just get let's just get it done let's just go i yeah. find um as well that uh so Matt usually does D&D in the bedroom and he'll have like his laptop and so the webcam will be on him and like another yeah we're just getting into the TMI information but like I'm coming like out of like the shower or whatever and I'm coming in behind and like he's playing and I'm there changing and I'm just like hey (laughs) just like (laughs) how much can I distract you um the answer is none at all (laughs) Just laser focused. Yeah, it doesn't even look up. It's just doing what he's doing. <laughs> the cliche in movies of like women distracting men from like video games and D&D and board games. Listen, ladies, I don't care if you're like, I don't care if you're Gal Gadot. No, dude. <laughs> well, maybe Gal Gadot. Damn it, I picked a nerdy dream. <laughs> yeah. And Jolie or I don't know, someone. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> they cannot be distracted. Like... <laughs> At least no, none of the men I've ever met. <laughs> They're all way too... Into, you need, like, someone who's half-assed into video games and D&D, but I feel like all our friends and guys are pretty committed. They're very committed. That's good. So that's probably the thing that's affected my life the most. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, do you have any favorite stories that you've heard from your partner about their campaigns that you can remember? one campaign where Jason was like in love with his backpack or something I just remember for a long time Adam would randomly say like backpack back, 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 and the voice that Jason would do and I'm really glad that's phased out um but it was funny at the time oh god uh Denny can you put a crickets noise in here yes <laughs> this is how much we listen I'm such a bad partner <laughs> like he's playing Probably a couple thousand hours of Dungeons and Dragons over the last five or six years, and I, he, I got nothing. I'm, I'm positive he was an, he was a dwarf, a um, who's a short, angry person with a thick Scottish accent for a while, which I thought was funny, but <laughs> I got nothing. Oh my god, I feel so bad. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I think Adam may have played like a dragon species character who was like afraid of the dark. Either he was afraid of the dark or he was afraid of fire. Mm. And it ended up being really funny because it was completely antithesis to his race. Oh dear, that's work. Give me five seconds. You know, I I helped Denny write this question and I also don't really have an answer for it. (laughs) This is how bad we are. But as I was kind of thinking, 
Matt played in a campaign, or I think he's currently playing in a campaign where they've probably talked about it on the podcast before, but where they're all rodents. And so that's pretty fun. So I think actually, I think Matt's a raccoon. No, or he's a rat. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> but like, it was um one of those like homebrew campaigns where they made like all these characters and it was like raccoons and rats and I, like I can't even remember like what are other rodents like mice and like capybaras or something like that like something crazy possums yeah I think there was possums yeah so that was weird that's wild yeah it was it was odd and he likes to play a lot of campaigns where he's like robots he likes to be robots and uh the one thing that like I didn't really realize because he never really plays characters like this or like has um, any stories about this, but like you can like romance each other in D and D, and I'm like, why don't you like have your character hit on other characters? He's like, I don't know, that's weird, it's very uncomfortable. I'm like, that's all I would be doing. I'd be like, oh hey, yeah, thank you. Yes, seduce the dragon. I don't. <laughs> it's the easiest way. Yeah, no kidding. Why are we trying to be out here fighting it? Like it's like the donkey and Trek. Like you just seduce the dragon. Have a nice yeah. little family. Get the castle. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Live happily ever after. That's it. <laughs> but then I guess the campaign wouldn't go on for weeks. It'd be like over in like a couple hours. This is probably why we don't play Dungeons and Dragons. Because it's like, what about somewhere to be? Like, let's wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. What I don't understand is like how the campaigns can last for like years. That's what I don't get. Like, how do you... Especially like when... Um, so like Logan runs a lot of campaigns and like that he writes himself and like there's one that they're all playing where they're all pirates and it's literally lasted for like over a year now and they play like weekly or bi-weekly or whatever like how do you and he wrote this campaign himself like how do you literally write that much content that you can like play for so long it's crazy I don't get it it's a uh, it's a lot it's a lot of commitment for something that I'd, I'm not interested in so I guess <laughs> maybe that's why. No, I feel the same. Even right at the beginning, Nick was starting to get into Dungeons and Dragons and he had been given the opportunity to DM like, I think a, uh, a campaign or just to kind of guest DM someone else's. And I, I was explaining it to me and he's like, there's all these different areas that they can go into dungeons and layers and we have to design all of them and anticipate what they might want to do. And then try to build the world around that. And it definitely boggles my mind. The amount of effort that goes into creating a whole world that you take into account. All of your characters and what they might want to do. And the interactions they mis- might wish to have. And the options that they have. And yeah, it's just so many layers. Yeah, it's crazy. Like when I when I did that uh, DM the one shot, it was like um, I wrote it myself. And it was an Animal Crossing theme. And it took me a month to write this like four hour thing and because like yeah because I don't really get it either of like and I talked about this on my last uh the episode that I was on before but like I don't really understand how to write something that could go in like unlimited amount of direction and like the characters control the story you don't really control the story as the dm and like that just stresses me out so much, like not knowing what's going to happen. It's just, and like not knowing if it'll go in like the story direction that I want it to go. I don't get it. Like props to all, all y'all listening who do that. Cause it's amazing. Yeah. It's a lot of world building. Mm-hmm. I've told Adam, I'm like, you know, I'm surprised it's like Logan and Denny. And I know Adam's the end and Nick and everyone. I'm like, Y'all just become authors. I don't know. <laughs> Be the next George R. R. Martin. I specifically say it to Adam because I'm like, I'd like to like buy the house and not have to work anymore. So if you could just like, please become the next best-selling fantasy author. That'd be great for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's so much. It's and it's so creative and mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, and and all encompassing. It's it's insanity. It's it's very impressive. Yeah. I think it's easy to kind of be like overwhelmed by like the sheer volume of the world. <clears throat> it's totally limitless. But then I guess I think about like, I love Lord of the Rings and I love Harry Potter. And I guess anyone who wasn't really into those things would also look at those worlds and be like, oh, there's an overwhelming amount of content and possibilities and ever expanding lore, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess if you're, if you're into it, it doesn't seem that uh, 
daunting. For sure. Hmm. Let's move on to the next question. Oh, this is kind of related. But uh, at any point, ha- has your interest ever been peaked into playing? Like, have you ever wanted to play at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I also would say no. <laughs> it sounds like, I think that we've kind of already gone over, you know, like why we don't want to play. But like... It's like sometimes like when Matt is starting a new campaign or like someone started like that rodent campaign. I was like, that sounds kind of interesting and kind of fun that like I think about it, like maybe I should join for one thing um, because like it sounds creative and it sounds fun. But then I think about literally making a character and like going through that whole thing and then like rolling for stats and combat and all that jazz and playing for four hours at a time i'm like that's too much work for me i can't i can't go into that yeah i guess that's the thing about truly having other hobbies like it's or i don't know just a totally different interests like at first he would invite me and be like do you want to play do you want to learn how etc and i mean no he doesn't anymore at all but there's just so many other things that i could think about to do with that time but i guess he yeah. feels the same way like he would probably not go on like a six hour hike like if he could be playing Dungeons and Dragons so it's a difference of interest but um yeah yeah like it's honestly I uh my best friend Eric um he tried to get in on one of their uh one one of their campaigns and so he came over and he sounds so I like sat down with them because you know I, I was just like listening and sometimes I'll sit with them for a little bit and just like pay attention and make inappropriate jokes um <laughs> and after you know an hour i'm like okay i'm done like up i get off i go but it's it's crazy because like i can read a book for three days straight i can go on a six hour hike i i do macrame for fun and i'll stand there tying knots for hours (laughs) (laughs) but for some reason and like i can listen to audiobooks and podcasts and all this stuff but uh yeah i don't know i don't know why i just i i always want to like talk about the the people I'm playing with, like, I actually, I, I used to get in trouble because everyone used to come over and then I'd be so excited to see them that it was like, Logan, what's new? What's happening? Like, how's the girlfriend? Denny, what's up? Like, I haven't seen you forever. Jason, like, do you want a glass of wine? Like, oh my, I missed you. How's the show going? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hate that actor too. Um, <laughs> and then like Adam is just staring at me. Like, Natalie, um, we want to start. You need to leave. And I'm like, excuse you. I was friends with all of these people before you were friends with these. Well, most of them. <laughs> like, <laughs> fine. I'll go to my room and I'll have fun there. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I always just want to like hang out. Yeah. I find that too, that it's weird. Like, that, like, I think I've said that as well to Matt. Like, he doesn't host here, like, when we could host actual people. Also, because. I would because they're all my friends as well. So I'd be weird and be like, oh, hey, but I'm just gonna like hang out in the bedroom and not talk to you, even though you're my friends. But it, it's just like weird, weird to me. But I also find that like I'm the only one in the friend group who doesn't play. And so they all talk about their campaigns with, like for like an hour. <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but cool. It sounds fun. So, I mean, if I'm in the minority, you know, that's that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. It's like the art of smiling and nodding. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And looking on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is like an interesting like social thing, though. I was just going to say, everyone will leave the house at the end of the night. And I'll say to Adam, like, oh, like, how is everybody? What's new in their lives? And he's like, I don't know. You didn't. You didn't talk at all? I get that all the time. Like, literally, you just had, like, ten people over. And I want, like, how's Jason? How's Denny? How's, what, what's new? Like, what's going on? And he's like, mm, I don't know, what an ask. I'm like, you just spent ten hours together. Like, what did you talk about? I mean, my God. But, yeah, it's, like, an interesting social thing, too, where, like, it's all, I'm friends with everyone, too. But then if they're over in my house, like, playing D&D, like, I just don't, like, I'm like, hey, guys, how's it going? And then I just pretend they're not even there and just like go about my day but then if we're going downtown or you know to go to do something like in a different like setting where we can all like talk about the same thing or we're all like doing the same thing then I'm like friends and talk with everyone and it's like a lovely time but it is a little weird sometimes where like these people are in my house but they're I don't know not here for me (laughs) yeah yeah all right so a surprise question 
if you could be in any fantasy world, which one would you be in? I mean, I love Lord of the Rings, but I'm not going to pick it because I don't like getting eaten by an orc. Um, I love Star Trek, but I also don't want to get killed by a Klingon. <laughs> I'm into Harry Potter, but if I pick Harry Potter as the world, do I get to be a witch or am I like all of a sudden does Harry, is Harry like does Hogwarts just exist? But I still didn't get my letter because that's bullshit. <laughs> and then like it's I it's the same thing with the you know Marvel universe it's like I want to be Wonder Woman I don't just want to like have a mug and it's an actual Wonder Woman you know what I mean oh sorry I said Marvel when I meant DC I wasn't gonna say anything but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt you or anything but yeah Here we go. oh my god you like that band name their last five albums and the lead singer's birthday yeah, or the fantasy <laughs> world police <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am, you know, the gate, like, that's a whole other podcast episode, the gatekeeping based on gender, but that's fine. Um, Anyways, I, yeah, I, there's so much, like, death and destruction in all fantasy worlds, I feel like, because you have to have high stakes that it makes a difficult question. But honestly, the ability to fly super strength in a lasso that makes everybody tell the truth is super tempting. Also, her hair is always perfect. Sue me. Really? Except I, I wouldn't be good. I mean, no, I'd rob a bank and then live on a private island. I think that's the truth of it. Though. Like, everyone, that's what we would all do. It's- Absolutely. Like, put more funding into mental health care and crime rates will go down. It's not that hard. You don't need my super shiny lasso to do that. Speaking the truth on this podcast, I mean, yep. let's, let's be real. <laughs> Honestly. Defund the police. <laughs> I think off the bat, I would probably say Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. But again, yes, I only want to be Harry Potter, though, if I'm a witch. Like, I don't want to be a squib or a muggle or anything. Like, it's that would, it would be very sad. I think I would be a very angry person if I was in the world of Harry Potter and I didn't have any powers. So I would just feel so cheated. I mean, yeah, how sad would that be? Makes you understand Filch, the caretaker, a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. If you see me and Filch. You're, like, dropped in this world and you, you know about the characters and that you know everything. And then you're a squib. That would be the saddest thing. <laughs> I would say that you could be a witch if you're going to be in Harry Potter. So if I wanted to be in Marvel, do you think that I could be an Avenger? Actually, they kind of have dramatic lives. I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I have room for that in my life. Yeah, I feel like Harry Potter. Nice. I was thinking, yeah, like with Marvel, that would be so destructive. I don't know if I would want to like even be a, like not a superhero, just be like a civilian. Like, oh, my city can get like totally destroyed. I just, like, maybe would be in that world and then not live in, like, New York or, like, London or any, like, big city because there's, like... were interesting. (laughs) Yeah, there's, like, a, like, 10 or 50-50 chance that it could get totally destroyed by a giant monster. Like, that doesn't sound fun. But I was thinking, because, like, my first thought was Harry Potter as well, because I love Harry Potter. But what about, like, Chronicles of Narnia? Like, nothing really crazy happens. It's just, like, a really pretty world i haven't really read all of chronicles of narnia i've read like the first three i was gonna say i'm pretty sure they crucify a lion in the first book a sentient one it's a metaphor for jesus and it's not very subtle <laughs> <laughs> but like there it's also pretty and you can go in through a wardrobe pretty cool or i mean i know i said no marvel but like the sitcom world of wandavision Mm, if you yeah. if you're not under a spell sounds fun don't watch don't spoil i i'm not gonna I, I won't spoil it i won't spoil but like in the sitcom land that sounds fun sounds like a fun time nothing bad happens and you're just in a sitcom sounds fun to me i think if you could be in the chronicles of narnia i feel like it would be a, almost a better decision to like just live in the mansion and maybe like board up the rather problematic wardrobe maybe that's like a, a very like kind of takes all the fun out of things but then you just have this huge mansion in the countryside like sounds all right yeah i mean it's also like during world war ii i'm pretty sure when or it was a world war one that's true yes didn't think about that so neither world is too shiny you know i'm changing my answer i want to be a witch in a harry potter world it seems like the least dangerous place to be with the benefit you have a stick that can like do everything mm-hmm. but not be friends with harry potter himself 
No, he's destructive. <laughs> yeah, you can't be friends with Harry in this world because it's just... He's got a lot of drama going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just be like Hannah Abbott or someone like off to the side. And yeah, um, secondary question, since we all kind of picked Harry Potter, what house are both of you in? First time I got Slytherin, second time I got Gryffindor, which is pretty on... I, I think that's pretty accurate. Probably maybe even more on the Slytherin side. Chelsea? Literally the exact same. Oh, really? I got Slytherin, and then I got Gryffindor, and I was, I can recognize myself, and Adam very kindly pointed it out. You're really more of a Slytherin. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <baby>. you too. <laughs> Thanks, and that's why I took the quiz again. Like, because I was, you know, so happy with the results the first time. We should hang out. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. <laughs> And it's like, ah, I don't know if I'm really happy with this. I could probably do better. Like, <laughs> that's, ex- that's exactly Slytherin, though. You're like, fuck that shit. I'm going to take it again and I pick the answers that I, I'm going to manipulate this test. Yes. I totally took it again. And I was like, well, maybe I can like tailor these Gryffindor answers a little more. You both are rude, first of all, because I am a Slytherin and proudly a Slytherin. <laughs> so <laughs> screw you guys <laughs> but like whatever it's fine yeah no I thought that I was like a Ravenclaw when I was like in high school and stuff and then I took the Pottermore test and it, it was a Slytherin and I was like rude and then I read it I was like oh yeah though it makes sense yeah, <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> All that's right. totally what happened to me too like growing up I was like oh Gryffindor totally I hate those Slytherins and then I totally got Slytherin and then I read up on it and I was like mm. Yeah, I'm not far off brand. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, Slytherin and Gryffindor are pretty similar. Just Slytherin's a bit more like power hungry and Gryffindor is a bit more glory hungry. Huh. Harry Potter. It's great. It's just, it's great. Author, not great, obviously. Oh, yeah. Fuck transphobia. And yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Exclusionary feminism. We're not here for that. No. It's so sad because she was. I really thought that she was a wonderful human being. And then all that came out and I'm like, what are you doing? That's no, everyone needs to be treated with respect and dignity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No time for turfs. Not no, at all. No. no. So yeah. So we're all not about that, but we are about the story. Yeah. Cool. So last question. What do you like about fantasy? And I guess you could say it's almost, it's probably, well, I'm not a religious person. Or at least not overly religious. But my perception of religion is that it gives like meaning to everyday life. And I guess it like religion probably more than fantasy provides like a set of values and morals that people can underpin their lives by and live by. And I, I guess like I would say that fantasy for me is like somewhat of a similar thing in that it, it gives like a little more meaning and interest. And I don't know, I guess it just fills up your everyday life like in little ways and big ways all the time. and. It's just lovely to have something that you are passionate about. I think that's probably like my favorite thing is when people are like passionate and excited about anything. And it's lovely to, yeah, to have these things to be passionate about that fill up your life that then you get to share with other people. Like talking about like Harry Potter and houses and that you have like common things in common that make it easier to make connections and friends and share the things that you're excited about. That's lovely. That's a really nice answer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I really like, you know, it as a form of escapism, obviously. It's entertainment. It's good fun. I also, I'm sure there's a part of me that enjoys that in most fantasy versus, like, good triumphs over evil or, like, whatever the fuck. You know, that kind of thing. It's, which is nice. I mean, I don't always read books like that. Sometimes I'm here for the evil character taking over the world and enslaving everybody. That's also, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. Like, it's always just been fun and fascinating, and I love the idea of other worlds and other things and other races and rules and species and forms of government, I suppose. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I, I don't really know that I can pinpoint exactly why I love fantasy, but I think escapism's a big part of it, general entertainment, and, um... I'm also really good at like obsessing over things when I find something I like it. Oh boy. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm, I, I think that like a lot of people who are into this kind of thing share that in common. Cause it's like, 
you'll learn all the stats about your favorite superhero or you'll know the exact comic book number when they got your favorite version of their costume. And like, it's, it's just so much to, to dive into. I think it's a lot of fun. Fun. I like that. Yeah. I'm really like, I wouldn't call myself a really huge fan of fantasy. Um, Like I like I, with the exception of Harry Potter and Marvel, but like what I like about, those things and I just yeah like I like the creativity I really really like making theories and like because a lot of fantasy goes like so deep with the like there's so much of it that you can like easily make your own stories with them you could do theories you can just can like talk about it for hours like Matt and I talked about Marvel for two hours the other night and like just because we watched the uh the new series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And so we just talked about Marvel for two hours. Like, and so it's just fun to like, yeah, like you said, just get other people into it and like talking about it. And it's just, I like the escapism part of it as well. Like, it's just fun, but theories are the best. And that's my favorite part of anything. And time travel is the best. That's anything with time travel. I'm here for it. I love it. It's great. Are you into Doctor Who then, Nikki? Um, actually, no. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> okay. Not everything. There's a standard. There's a bar for t- the, this and above for time travel. I think that it's not that I wouldn't be into Doctor Who. I just I've never seen it really, and like it's I've it's a big it. dive. Yeah, and it's or maybe I've seen like one or two episodes. I also don't like shows that are really campy either. Um, mm. so I'm not super super into it, but. Maybe one day that I, I like I always see I don't know on like when I read BuzzFeed and stuff of like best TV episodes and like that one with Doctor Who where they go back to get Van Gogh is like always on those lists. And, I'm, and I've never seen that episode and I always want to see that episode because I also love art. And so I'm like, that sounds so nice. It sounds like a cool episode, but I've never seen it. So that uh, sorry, you said time travel. I jump. What's your favorite time travel thing? I love um, Interstellar. That's like one of my oh, favorite movies. Oh, I love that movie. It's so good. I'm obsessed it's- with Christopher Nolan and all of his movies, but that movie is a masterpiece. Yeah. Do you, what do you think of 2001? I guess, sorry, there's really, there's no time travel in 2001. Well, I guess. I, I've never seen it either. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I do want to see it though. Like it has been on my list, even though it's like really long. It's three hours. It's, but Interstellar was like, uh, I think a lot of Interstellar was based on 2001. So if you like that movie, it's, it's super good. And like my opinion, but also I would probably bring some coffee. <laughs> to <that> yeah. Movie. <laughs> what else? I really loved like the Avengers end game because it had time travel in it as well. That was like super cool. Have you seen the movie about time? It's like a romantic comedy. It is wonderful. It's a wonderful movie <laughs> and it has time travel in it. So I'd recommend that as well. Mm, who's in it? What's his name? Domnal Gleeson I forget he was yeah he's like that redheaded like British guy it's a British movie Rachel McAdams is in it as well I thought so I think I've seen the movie poster for that what do you think about Tony's like ver- I guess Endgame's version of time travel like how he sort of conceives of that or how him and I think he was using Friday at that point conceived of that how they were going to time travel if you will what do you mean like how it's like they kind of brought in like a multiverse type of situation do you feel like it was like relatively plausible compared if you like time travel compared to how other like franchises I guess have tackled or movies have tackled like time travel yeah I think so like that kind of makes the most sense to me and like to try to like eliminate the plot holes a little bit of like going back in time but it's like a different dimension type of thing because I've read also Stephen King's 112263 and that deals with time travel. And it's like the same kind of thing where like every time you go back in time, you go to a different dimension. And so like they're always like splitting off. So that's kind of what it reminded me of. And I mean, it worked within the context of the movie, how they could like bring people back. I mean, <laughs> so that worked as well. But yeah. Have you uh, have you seen Umbrella Academy? No, I haven't. But I've heard it's I've heard it's good. And there's time travel. So in season two. Perfect. No, oh, uh, mild spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> Season one is what you know. Too, I'll just shut up. Watch Umbrella Academy. It's good shit, and it's filmed in Toronto. Just, just one thing. When we were talking about like what fantasy world we want to live in, I mean, I know it's not 
technically fantasy, but I love that none of us brought up Star Wars because Disney ruined it so badly. Sorry if you have any Disney sponsors. Um, like, damn, they fucked that up. Yeah, I was thinking about Star Wars originally, and I was, but I was only thinking about like the first like three movies, and then. But I mean, living on Naboo would be beautiful, like for a while, I guess. But yeah, I don't. It's there's just too much. Mm, you've got a pretty high chance of being killed. I, I don't know. And space, ah, mm, dangerous. That. Ah. <laughs> but yes, also the last three movies, I'm like, mm. yeah, I am. Um, uh, have never. I've seen some of the Star Wars movies. But I am not a big Star Wars fan. <laughs> I haven't seen all of them. Like any of the new, new ones, I haven't seen at all. You know what? Just pretend they don't exist. Although I will say Adam Driver is real great as Kylo Ren. Yeah. I want to go back and watch. I've actually been going. I started episode one and I'm, I think I'm on episode like five right now. I'm just like doing a rewatch. And I haven't done that where I've like gone and then watched all of J.J. Abrams, like his, the most recent trilogy. And so I want to like, watch it all in arc and kind of see how that goes like happy oh i don't want to say a ton if you're gonna watch it at some point i'm i'm not it's all right having the final battle like on the crumbled pieces of the death star like that's super cool i think like there was there was some really cool like stuff but yeah i want to see how it holds up i want to go to that island that they filmed like luke's where he's living yeah yeah, yeah. was that off ireland i think I'm not sure. I recently watched a, like a three hour, the making of like that trilogy. And it was, it's a really remote Island somewhere. It's like helicopter access only, but I'm not sure where it's from, where it's like close to. Yeah. I don't know why I've just like never really been that into it. Like, but who knows? Like I also said that about Marvel a few years ago and then I got like super into it. So you never know. Things can change. I could, we could all be, by this time next year, we could all be avid D&D players. You never know. Oh, it would have to get a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there would have to be like a room by room lockdown in our home. <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> yeah. So rude. We're all so rude. Terrible. <laughs> D&D Terrible. podcast. <laughs> so the next section is a game. So are y'all ready to play? a super fun D&D related game because I'm excited. So the game that we're going to be playing, it is building a character. Sorry, I forgot about the music. But this game, I'm excited for this because since we all kind of have very minimal knowledge about D&D, that I thought it would be fun to build a character together. And I think it'll be more funny for people who do know about D&D and are listening to this because they'll be like, that doesn't make sense. But we'll be like, but this character is really cute, so it doesn't matter. So I'm excited about that. So basically what happens is there's a list of things about this character and we all go in order and we say something for this character based on the topic and then we'll have like a fully fleshed out character and anyone who wants to play it can play it listeners at home it'll be great uh so yeah so we can just kind of like go in order and i'll name out the uh topic yeah okay so let's let's do it let's let's make a fun character together so the first one is picking a high low stat for this character what does that mean i don't know do we want to do like high combat Oh, okay. So, like, high is, like, what you're good at, low is what you're bad at. Yes. Is that right? Is that... Are we thinking that? that that's my assumption. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I want to say, like, high defense or high combat are those things that we can choose? We're all Slytherin. Should we pick, like, high cunning? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that's <laughs> a good idea. Or, how like, high survival instinct. I don't know if that's one you can pick, but I'm here for it. I like it. Well, yeah, because one of the stats... There's like dexterity, there's charisma, there's constitution. I heard of that one, yeah. <laughs> so like exercise ability. I don't know like yeah. how, how fit they are. <laughs> cunning sounds like it could be a real thing. Like I feel like a high cunning. Yeah, I like that. We're making it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So this this character is very cunning, but what is their low stat? What are they not good at? Generosity? 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I like it. I'm going to write it down. So they're high cunning, low generosity. So they're just rude. Fucking dick. Yeah. yeah they're just rude. Love it. Okay. So the next is the class. What class are they? Bourgeoisie. Yes. Bourgeoisie. <laughs> I don't think that's actually what you can say. How do you spell bourgeoisie? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God, it's been a long time since grade 10 history class. Uh, B-O-U-R something else. It doesn't matter. It's in my it's in my brain. It's in bougie. My brain. They should be bougie. Really always put together, like, turning out, but not in a way that's, like, super obvious that they put effort in. Like, just mm-hmm. a little bit of bougie. They're bad and bougie. Love it. Like a subtle glow. Yeah. Presentation is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're just describing the Malfoys right now. I mean, I love Tom Felton. He's great. I really want him and Emma Watson to get together. Me too. So cute. That would be cute. Okay, so, like, are you a secret in the closet Draco Hermione shipper? Yeah. No, I would not say, yeah, I, I don't think so. But, like, Tom and Emma, though, should definitely get together as individuals. <laughs> They're so lovely. That's fair, I guess. Um, there's this podcast I listen to. It's called Potterotica. Have either of you listened to it? No. I'm about to. Yeah, that sounds great. Oh my god, it's amazing. So they did change their name. It's called they're called Fangasm now, but they basically read out erotic fan fiction. And the first like six seasons are Harry Potter. It's fantastic. No way. Yeah. It's like terrible some of the stories that they're like just poorly written and they're very bad. But then some of them are like oh, <laughs> this is really good. Like, this is well-written, and I'm in- into this. Yeah, I, you know what? I'll, I'll come out and admit it publicly. I'll read fan fiction sometimes, but you know what? It has to be well-written. I can't read poorly written anything. <laughs> There's too much literature in the world to read anything subpar. I mean, I guess unless you're reading, like, an author that's, like, new to writing or something. Another podcast reco for everybody in uh, at home. <laughs> it's very different <laughs> from what we're talking about. Uh, okay, so next is a... Oh, next is the race. Is, it, is there, like, humans, wizards? I'm thinking about, like... Elf, orc. Yeah. I'm thinking about, like, a munchkin. Uh, Cthulhu. But I don't think that's a race. I think that that's, like, the, the Cthulhu is the overarching... He's a monster, isn't he? Like, he's a... I think you're right. I think he's, like, the overarching baddie monster thing yeah because i don't think you can like play that yeah yeah he's not you're right he's not a race we can make like a squid man race uh can it be like do we have to be a man no do you want do you want to be it well i mean you know what we can make a race that actually doesn't have genders that'd be sick sounds good non-gender conforming squid person love it with high cunning (laughs) (laughs) very bougie and low generosity and impeccably dressed yes Oh, I'm picturing this character right now in my head. I feel like this is someone that, like, it's like Squidward would really could like deeply fall in love with, <laughs> like later in his <laughs> retirement years after he's done on the, the sitcom SpongeBob, <laughs> like retires with yes. our person. I'm thinking like an androgynous, but still super hot. Obviously, like Medusa, but instead of snakes, it's like Squiddy bits. Ooh. Yeah. That's way better. No, she can still totally fuck Squidward. <laughs> I feel like they would live happily ever after. Yeah, Squidward kind of gives off that energy. I mean, he would be totally happy with our person, I think. Mm-hmm. Serenade her with his clarinet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to write super hot Medusa squid non-binary person. So next they have a quirk. It's quirky. You know, think like Zoe Deschanel level quirky. Just get it. So like so something like weird about about them. What about just thinking of like Medusa and having squid hair? You know that like weird thing in like the seventies or whatever in like glamour magazines where they had that you should brush your hair a hundred times every night before you go to bed. I do remember that. Yeah. No, I've never heard of that. That sounds like it's that's not far off base. Like that sounds like it would be a commercial. Yeah, that's it. Just sounds exhausting. So maybe this, our person, has to brush their squid? That doesn't make any sense. Finger combs. She finger combs her squids a hundred times every night. While she checks her emails. How would that actually work in D&D, though? While they (laughs) check their emails. Sorry, non-binary. While they check their emails. 
But like before they go into battle, they have to run their fingers. Tie back the squid or the squids, I don't know. But you would think that that would be useful in battle. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Like they're uh why can't I think of him? The big bad pirate in Pirates of the Caribbean who's got a squid beard. Oh, um Davy Jones. Davy Jones. There you go. And then there's like that big squid and he like sucks people's faces off with the squid thing, maybe. The Kraken. Yes. I've seen that movie. I've seen those movies so many times. I don't know why I can't think of all of the appropriate names at this time. But <laughs> Squid Face Man. That sounds yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. So that so what is so what is our quirk for our person? <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of crack there, sorry. <laughs> Like, I guess we could say, you know, before they go into, like, battle, they have to... No, yeah, because, yeah, they could use their squid hair to fight. I think we have to think of something else. What if they have to say something, like, encouraging to each squid strand? Like, you can do it. You're going to be great. This is going to be a good battle. I'm really impressed with how much you're working on your stamina. Well done, you. Rico, you look amazing today. Et cetera. That sounds perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so encourages squid hair before battle. I mean, they're not generous to other people, but they're generous to their own squid hair. Yes. That's what's important. Okay, we have a quick backstory for our person. Oh, no, I'm sorry. A flaw. <laughs> that's that's the first one. We have to do a flaw. Crippling social anxiety because they only talk to their hair? That would make sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Does anyone have another one they'd like to... But how are they high cunning if they have social anxiety? I'm sure lots of smart people can't talk to people. So you can pick something different. Definitely can pick something different. I'm projecting with the social anxiety. (laughs) I like the idea of them being like really... I Like going off of that, not being anxious, but just being like really rude and like never knowing what to say properly because like they're pretty bougie right and so they're just like everything they say to people is like super rude so i guess they like have i guess in D D terms they have low charisma i don't know what that is it sounds professional yeah yeah i am a professional i host a D podcast now so you know it makes <laughs> sense this person like never tips their waiter i bet and it's bugging me yeah i'm gonna add that too doesn't tip (laughs) rude customer yeah i think that uh you know that they can go into restaurants in D &D, so like this is an important an important thing purchased one whole meal for self and ate small meals for tentacles and did not tip yeah that's a lot of work that the restaurant has to do i mean i don't know okay so now we can go into a quick backstory why is our character the way that they are do they have a hard life i don't know they were grown up in a bougie, bougie scenario. I think they definitely grew up rich. Maybe they were like one of a hundred squid children. Just no attention from mom and dad. Well, I mean, if this is like an actual like octopus mating, then dad died after he threw his dick at her mother. But <laughs> their mother. That makes total sense. I was going to say like the middle child, but your version is much better. No, no, no. They're number 50 in the hundred. Number 50. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, middle child, totally overlooked, no attention, very angry. And the funny thing is, is that I bet you they are actually very oddly social for a squid person. Like most squid people stick to the ocean. They don't talk to actual humans or elves or anybody. But they were like, no, there's a more fulfilling life out there. I'm going to go offend some people and make some friends. <laughs> <laughs> Except uh, they have a little bit of trouble making friends since they're so rude. And they have low generosity. <laughs> so I don't know. Honestly, that checks some boxes for some friends who I absolutely adore. If you like, there is an advantage to having an absolute bitch be a good friend because as long as they love you, yeah, they're an absolute bitch to everybody you got a problem with. You're right. They're going to like sneak the parking spot and like tell someone off if they cut in front of you in line and. I feel like it's having a bouncer. It's like having a bouncer. Like, yes. with you at all times. Just being like, excuse you, like, you, like, were rude to her or something. <laughs> like, a restaurant will get your order wrong, and you won't say anything because it's little and it's not a big deal. But you have this super rude friend who's like, um, excuse me. And obviously this, not acceptable. That's not. But her no. bringing it up, or them bringing it up and being like, uh, you got the order wrong. You're kind of like, well, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> this is great. 
This is very good. <laughs> I'm clearly hungry. I keep talking about restaurants. That's fine. That's good. Okay, lastly, we need a name. Okay, non-gender name. Baloo? Blue or Alu? Blue. But Alu sounds a lot better. Alu sounds more aquatic. Blue is just the name on the speaker here. I looked, That was the first thing that I saw. <laughs> I'm a professional. JBL? No. JBL? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I like, I liked, did you say Alu? Yeah. Yeah. The, Nikki said Alu. That's nice, Nikki. I like that one. Cool. And they're very aloof. Yaha. Nice. Alu, the aloof squid. <laughs> All right. So let's sum up our, our lovely character that everyone would want to play, I think. So Alu is a squid person. They are exactly a middle child, number 50 out of 100 in their family. They wanted more on the surface than what they were living underwater. They wanted to be rude to so many more people other than just their family. So they're a bitch, but you love them because they love you and they're rude to everybody else and they snap at waiters and they don't tip. So don't want to take them to a restaurant. Not super great. Um, They're high cunning, low generosity. They're very bougie, non-gender conforming squid person, super hot Medusa squid hair. And their flaw, or no, their quirk, is that they have to encourage all of their squid hair before every battle. And that, folks, is how you make a character in D&D. So... If anyone listening needs needs advice, this is exactly how you do it. This is the forum for you. <laughs> yeah. I like I think my favorite is low generosity. I think that's a good stat <laughs> overall. <laughs> that's just wonderful. Cool. <laughs> I don't think we actually like played that game correctly, according to <laughs> the list, <laughs> but it's fine. We're good. We're good. We do our own thing. That's all right. We weren't hired for our experience. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So our next segment that we have is called Question Dicely. And it is a chance to answer a listener question. This listener question is from at Adrian Forever on Instagram. It is a doozy. It's a pretty tough question. So we have to put our thinking caps on. So he asks, honestly, I'm tired of chips. Whoops. What's the best D&D snack for a long encounter? So... These sessions can sometimes go for hours, and you're all in an enclosed space, probably a small apartment, generally, um, or, you know, a smallish home, whatever. I would not suggest, like, hurry curry. (laughs) Not not a good way to go, folks. Also, like, most places only have one bathroom. Think it through. It's true. That's like a no food option. Don't do that. Or anything too spicy, I feel like, either. Because if you go too spicy, like, I love spicy food. But if you go too spicy, everybody's like, do you have a glass of milk or some yogurt? Yeah. And yogurt's expensive, so don't eat my yogurt. I like how your friends sound like Midwestern moms. Just, <laughs> yeah, <my> yogurt. <laughs> Try yogurt. <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, the guys always come over and eat all of the food, which is totally fine. I anticipate it. Cookies are always good, but not very healthy. I usually put a veggie tray together if I have time and am feeling magnanimous. But a really uh, hot one has been, I I make banana or zucchini bread. And it's great Mm. because like it's fresh and delicious, but it's also like literally, it doesn't make any mess. It's a piece of bread. It's just bread. That's true. That makes sense. Very good idea. I really wanted to try zucchini bread. I've heard like there's like zucchini and walnut bread. I make a really good banana bread though. That makes sense. Yeah, I'll send you my zucchini and walnut bread recipe. Yes, I would love that. I was gonna say like McDonald's or Domino's, but that's probably not optimal. It's just what all the guys seem to fall back on. Like eventually, yeah. if there's a D and D campaign like halfway through, you walk out and you're like, oh, Domino's threw up in my house. Like there's just <laughs> boxes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely good call. Usually, there's only one bathroom, no spicy food. I don't know. Be res- pack a lunch i think that 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 could be like a good like if you're going to play D, you're probably going to be there for many hours so it's like going to school i feel like as like a little kid like you like should bring your own paper bag with like some carrot sticks and a juice box and i think that would make things so much more enjoyable because then halfway through not everyone's like angry and starving and killing each other just because they're hangry and yeah True. Be like pack a balanced little lunch if you can i like that as well 
the day more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because you're playing for a long time. Yeah. You have to be healthy because you're not going to, like, just eat chips like our listener has alluded to. And that's just not going to, it's just not going to help. I mean, I like the pizza idea as well. But you just, you pack a nice salad, you know, just yeah. get some, get some energy in. Do some, like you say, do some walnut bread. Like, I would love to see, like, it would be super wholesome if there was, like, just a bunch of people were going, like, with their little paper bag lunches to get together to play some D&D. And you're going to be there all day. Juice box, carrot sticks, sandwich, crust cut off. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm kind of packed for these D&D players. Like, they're in the third grade, but apparently <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> you're just thinking about the well-being. It's all good. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, and uh, listeners, remember if you want to submit a question to Question Dicely, you can send an email with your question to dicelychannel at gmail.com. And don't forget to leave a social media handle for uh, Denny to give you a shout out. So um, that's it for our, for our podcast episode. And uh, thanks for joining the Speak Dicely podcast. And if you guys want to plug anything, any social media, where can people find you? Um, I don't really have any followable social media, generally. Uh, if Denny wants to do a shout out or whoever wants to do a shout out, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's me, Natalie V on Instagram. But yeah, next time all of our partners get together and are doing a campaign together, we should, we should get together as well. And like, that'd be so nice. I think yeah. that, like we seem to have a lot in common. Uh, so mm-hmm. we should, we should hang out. You guys are fun. I really enjoyed Absolutely. this. I feel like I feel like next time we should come with drinks and like maybe a little bit of banana bread and zucchini bread and yes. some margarita mix. Yes. It's good. I think we'll be pack great. Wine. Some wine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pack some carrot sticks and yeah. Yeah, some tequila <laughs> and a balanced <laughs> situation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, I don't really have any followable social media for me personally, but my really good friend Genevieve Canavan just started a podcast called The Society of Grownups, and it is available everywhere that you can find podcasts. And they just chat about trying to be grownups, and they have different guests on, I think, that record every week. So you can check that out if you want to. Yeah, I'm really not on much else, to be honest. I, I'm only on Facebook for Marketplace, so. <laughs> Girl sick. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> just that used market. Well, uh, cool. I can plug myself extensively then. So I'm excited to steal all the spotlight. You can find me on YouTube. I run a baking show called A Very Awkward Baking Show. It's a baking meets comedy show where I am a very amateur baker and I try to make recipes that are extremely out of my comfort zone. So there's two seasons up there right now and I'm filming more at the moment. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at awkward underscore baking. So that's all baking stuff. And uh, yeah, that's uh, so that thanks for God. Thanks for listening to the podcast. This is my podcast now. Oh, hi there, Natalie, Nikki and Chelsea. Hi. Hi. Oh, I noticed you guys were in the discord and are, are you guys recording an episode? I don't think that's uh, something you need to know right now, Denny. Just don't worry about it. I, I'm going to take that as a yes. So like, did you guys already start? Like, I usually I'm in these. Uh, no, it's okay. We didn't really need you for this one. Yeah, we didn't need you today, Danny. Sorry. Yeah, take the day off. I got this. Mm-hmm. You deserve a break. You've been working hard. Yeah. D- like, you guys got th- through everything then? Yeah, we're we're all good. We're We're good to go. Well, all right. I guess then I'll just do the outro. Well, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this April Fool's episode of Speak Dicely. My name is Denny Brandt, and today's host was Nikki Degui. Be sure to check her out on the Very Awkward Baking Show on YouTube. And I guess I will speak dicely with you next time. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, bye bye. 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 You can find the Speak Dicely podcast on Podbean and most anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Follow Dicely DND on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to the Dicely DND YouTube channel where you can find our video series on how to play Dungeons & Dragons, as well as other videos. The Speak Dicely podcast is produced and edited by myself, Denny Brandt, and the intro and outro music were created by Salik Brandt. I thank you for the support, and we'll see you next time on the Speak Dicely podcast.